In previous days, Siaraji started to speak about the benefits that one gains when one realizes Sotapati path knowledge. The elimination of the large mass of loba, greed, dosa, anger, and moha, delusion, and especially the false view known as Sakaya Deti, the belief that there is a self regarding this nama and rupa, which is evident, mind and matter, and skeptical doubt, vichikecha, and sila bata paramasa, the belief in rites and rituals. These three, these are all eliminated. And Sayadoji spoke about how one comes to suffering through practicing in the wrong way. So today, according to the order, he will talk about how samsara, the suffering in samsara, is like an ocean. It is called anamataga sansara, vota dukkha samoda soseti. This benefit of getting sotapati path uh, is that the ocean of samsara, samsara is, com is compared to a great ocean because its start cannot be seen, anamatega. And this mind and matter occurring continuously, that is called samsara, in this, the round of kilesas is occurring, that is avijja, tanha, and upadana, ignorance, craving, and clinging, are, are revolving like a circle, like a wheel. And based on these, one performs actions, good actions and bad actions. And although one performs good actions, they bring with them the result of birth in which, uh, in a new life where one ages, gets sick, dies. So this type of suffering follows. As long as there are causes, there will be results. So the cycle of kilesas, the cycle of kama or actions, and the cycle of results, where do these occur? They occur in every moment of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, opening and closing the eyes, blinking. They occur in mind and matter, nama and rupa. So there is no end to this, and that is why this uh, samsara is called anamatega samsara, the, the, the samsara whose start and end cannot be seen. And in this, suffering arises, suffering comes. That's why this is compared to a great ocean. And with gaining the knowledge, a path knowledge of the Sotapanna, this ocean is dried up. So it is said, Anamataga Thantara Vuta Dukkha, the suffering of the cycles of samsara that is like a great ocean is dried up by the path knowledge. So today Sayadoji would like to speak about this in, in theory and in practice. When one gains the path knowledge of a stream winner, Sotapanti, Mega, Meg, Mega, then one has, one dwells in the human and the deva realms lifetime after lifetime going either up or down just between these two realms the human realm and the deva realm at most for seven more lifetimes this is what is said so if one doesn't gain this first path knowledge then 
there's no end to one's life in samsara because due to past kamma, past actions, a new life results. And in that new life, one performs actions, kamma. And these lead to new life in which one again performs actions. So there is no end that can be seen to this great ocean of samsara. But if one gains the path knowledge of the stream winner, then one only uh, one lives a limited number of times only in the human world uh, which is still a very confusing busy place and also in the realm of sense delights of the devas and if one gains jhanas worldly jhanas as a sotapanna then one can go to will can go to that realm but if one does so, one will not go down to the deva realms or the human realms after being in the Brahma realms. But these, these realms too are suffering. The path of Sotapati, um, the Sotapana, first path knowledge, as Sayaruji said yesterday, it dispels extreme greed, extreme hatred, extreme delusion, as well as doubt. These no longer arise, and thus one is free of apaya, the lower realms. So this word apaya is made up of two words, apa and Aya. And Aya means happiness and growth. One doesn't gain happiness and growth for nothing. It comes from clean, pure behavior, keeping the five precepts, gaining strong metta and karuna, loving kindness and compassion. And as now one observes every second of the time. And this um, cause for happiness and growth that is called Aya, it only arises if Vipassana knowledge is developed stage by stage, and then if path knowledge arises. So if one gains at least Sotapati Maga, the first path knowledge, then one uh, has uh, human knowledge that is very sharp and keen, very special. And this is called Aya. This Aya is the cause for human happiness, celestial happiness of the Deva realms and the happiness of Nibbana. So if one goes to the lower realms, the four lower realms, then in those realms one has no opportunity to, to, to perform this type of wholesome deed, this called Aya. One has the no, no opportunity to uh, practice this. No one, has, one has no chance to perform good deeds such as dana. So one can't perform deeds which are the cause for happiness to arise. But if one becomes a sotapanna by realizing the first path knowledge, then the door to these realms is no longer open. And that these types of birth do not have the chance to arise in the future. So this is... Uh, this is guaranteed. When one gains Sotapati path knowledge, this is guaranteed. If one gains the knowledge of a Sotapana, Sotapati path knowledge, it eliminates very base physical and verbal behavior. 
and it eliminates false beliefs uh, that are the cause causes for for suffering so these are cleared out to the point of no return and one is thus called an arya arya means clean and pure in english it's translated as noble noble one so the one literal meaning is that of cleanliness and purity if one is not clean or pure then one is low and base and if one is a little bit clean then one one's status is a bit higher so one is the cleaner and more pure the one is the higher one's status and if there are no kilesas no defilements left at all then uh, that is the stage of an arahant so this is what the meaning of arya is to be clean and pure and it also has the meaning of otama which is to be excellent <laughs> so if one reaches this point such a person uh, a, per, a person who is arya automatically gains seven possessions without even having to look for them at that at that time of realizing path knowledge one's mindset becomes changed greatly one gains seven benefits or seven qualities and before realizing path knowledge one knows how one's mind is there's uh, one has sorry one hears about the seven benefits that one can gain from the practice and faith wakes up and with this wakened faith as a base one one wants to get the benefits that one has heard about the purity of physical and verbal and mental behavior at the le- at least one wants to try to see what happens so one comes to the realm of the dhamma and if at that point one walks straight along the path then one as it's as it is said walking the correct path one reaches the correct destination so when one practices respectfully then with effort mindfulness and concentration virya sati and samadhi the obsessive defilements the paryotana kilesas are quelled and when knowledge develops because of one's um accurate aim then the mind is also more clean because the even the refined kilesas have been removed so what at that point one's physical verbal and mental mental behavior are all clean so because one knows truly one comes to acceptance and this is decisive faith one realizes that this is the right way to go so this is what this this type of de- decisive faith that comes from knowledge in the practice is what one who cherishes the dhamma comes to possess they come to possess this faith and this is especially apparent at the stage of udiya bhyanana seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena at this stage faith is called adimaka or or uh, decisive faith before that stage one's faith is not decisive one hasn't seen enough yet to make a decision but uh, at the stage of udiya bhyanana one has decisive faith and if one continues to practice from that point uh, then until one gains if one keeps on going and gains path knowledge 
what, we'll ha- what one will have is called adhikama sada. This, um, f- this is another type of faith that one gains. So one comes to possess faith and because one possesses this, one, uh, even if one threatens you, someone threatens you, your faith will not be broken. Even if someone comes and bribes you, you your faith will not be broken. Uh, even if someone who can speak really well uh, comes to try to talk you out of having faith, they won't be able to do it. Uh, this is because you've gained the wealth of faith or sada called sada dana. And this exists uh, when one gains sotapati path, this type of faith exists not only throughout one's present life, but throughout one's future lives. When one controls oneself so as not to, to err, not to make mistakes, and so as not to harm others, by walking the pure path, Doing so, one becomes pure oneself. One gains virtue. And so one knows, too, that one has come to possess virtues. And this, this, the virtues that one comes to possess are called dana, dana, which means wealth in Pali. And some people, when they gain this, they even exclaim, "Ah, I've gotten these! I've gotten these wealth, this type of wealth." So, this type of wealth that one comes to possess is called dana. And what we gain through the correct method, the faith that is gained in this way, is one's own which cannot be destroyed by any type of cause. No cause can destroy it. So one has gained this firm possession. Sila dana, the wealth of sila, or morality. For ordinary lay people, the five precepts which make us true human beings the avoiding of killing, the avoiding of stealing, of committing sexual misconduct, of lying, of taking drugs and intoxicants. The avoidance of these five is the good practice of sila. And as a sotapanna, one doesn't break this, these five precepts. Thus one gains this possession called the wealth of sila, the wealth of morality. And with this, one also regards wrongdoing. Uh, One is disgusted by them the way one would be disgusted by feces. And one fears, shrinks from doing wrong the way one would shrink and fear picking up a red-hot iron burning ball. So these qualities of disgust and healthy fear regarding wrongdoing are called hiri and otapa, moral shame and moral dread. One gains these qualities too. One who does not have this moral shame and moral dread that is, most people in the world lack this and are thus immoral. People don't dis- are not disgusted by wrongdoing. They don't think of it as feces, and people are not uh, do not fear committing wrong, even though it's like picking up a hot, red hot iron burning ball. So one gains this wealth, uh, which, which brings about self-control, this, the wealth of moral shame and moral dread. So one can't, comes to gain this with past knowledge. 
Hiri and Otapa are like the color white, this moral shame and moral dread. When one goes into a hot place, if one wears white clothing, then the white will repel the heat. Whereas if one wears black, it will absorb heat. So Hiri and Otapa, moral shame, and moral dread extract the heat of the kilesas because of having shame as though the wrong deed were feces one doesn't want to touch it one doesn't want to do that type of thing and also because of fear uh, because one regards wrongdoing as dangerous as a red hot iron burning ball, one won't touch that type of thing. Thus one's mind becomes, because one has this mindset of moral shame and moral dread, one's mind becomes clean. Thus the heat of the kilesas is extracted. One who possesses these can preserve one's own individual world and can also make the world around one peaceful. And thus it is said that one, the, one, uh, one who can do this, preserving one's own individual world and making the world around one peaceful, shines with this virtue. And the virtue that causes people to shine is this good quality of hiri and otapa, moral shame and moral dread. When one, come has to, uh, when one has come into possession of these virtues, then one has also gained what is called Agama Sutta, that one knows the method. Uh, one gained these virtues through the path of practice, and thus one knows this method. One knows the method of how to work both for oneself and for others. Or in another way of looking at it is that one knows how to work for one's present life as well as the future. So one gains this knowledge. And this is called Adigama Sutta, the learning that one has come to possess the wealth of learning. So one who, one who practices well uh, experiences a lot of delight in hearing the Dhamma because the Dhamma is their own possession. And this is, um, this is called Sutta Dhana, the wealth of learning. And when learning is there, then one, because one knows the method for uh, dispelling the things that are bad. One has learned this method. When bad things are dispelled, then good things come. And uh, what gain, one also gains is the wealth of generosity, chaga. One is able to uh, give freely and one also knows against the wealth of wisdom because one knows the theory and one knows the path of practice stage by stage and when one develops vipassana knowledge so that it comes to maturity and one realizes nibbana all these are the types of panya from knowing the theory to knowing the path of practice stage by stage to knowing it all the way until the goal. These are all wisdom that one gains. So one also gains the, the wealth, the possession of wisdom, panya dana. So these are the seven that one gains, faith or sada, morality or sila, Hiri, moral shame, otapa, moral dread, learning, which is sutta, 
and generosity, jaga, and panya, wisdom. When one realizes past knowledge, these possessions become one's own. And it's, uh, these are the seven possessions of a noble person, an arya. And one, one, it's as though they are placed at one's very feet uh, when one comes. So wanting to get to a higher level one follows this path with faith and with desire to gain the results that come. And if one, as it said, if one walks the right path, one is sure to reach the right destination. So when one walks this path and then gets the result of reaching the right destination, one no longer accepts the wrong type of path that one used to follow one sees the wrong path as wrong and no longer follows it. So it is said, atengikang mecha megang pajahati, that so the path knowledge of a sotapanna dispels this wrong path made up of eight path factors. The eight factors of the wrong path are first of all mecha, mecha deti, wrong view, because one now sees correctly, the wrong view has been dispelled. And there's no more wrong objective, wrong aim, because of having right aim. And the actions such as lying or slander, harsh speech, frivolous talk, <coughs> that is, wrong speech, or the acts of killing, stealing, adultery, that is wrong action, and wrong ways of ma making a livelihood that is based on breaking the five precepts. One, uh, uh, these are all replaced by right speech, right action, right livelihood. And Making effort in the wrong way, michavayama, is dispelled by making right effort and reaching the goal. So thus one doesn't waste one's time in uh, meaningless ways anymore. There's no more michasati or wrong mindfulness and no more michasamadhi, wrong concentration, because the correct samadhi has arisen. So the wrong practice, the incorrect practice of sila, samadhi, and panya has been dispelled. And thus it is said, atengikang, micha megang, pajahati, that so the path of knowledge of a sotapanna dispels this wrong, eight, wrongful, eightfold path. If, um, sorry, if one becomes a sotapanna, then even if someone tries to bribe you or tries to threaten you or tries to persuade you, uh, you, you will not, uh, they will not succeed in uh, turning you to another path outside of satipatthana. This is, uh, this is a benefit that it comes from realizing path knowledge. And another benefit is esamago sabawira bhyani vupasameti, that this path quells all, da all enemies and dangers. Vera is translated, at, uh, Vera is the Pali word, and translated as enemy. There can be two types either internal or external. Or another way of looking at it is there is the enemy of the kilesas, defilements, and the enemy in the form of a person. The kilesas occur inside oneself. When greed arises, it arises in one's being. And 
when greed becomes extreme, if, one, if it goes out of control and becomes extreme, then one transgresses. One turns to acts of stealing things that belong to others or transgressing in many different sexual ways. Or one can lie uh, because of what one wants. And if anger becomes extreme, then one turns to acts of cruelty, killing. One lies and cheats in order to harm others. And when one has no knowledge, then one will use drugs and intoxicants. And because of, because of these, one can turn to violence and harm, harm others. So these are very fearful enemies, the enemies within. And in the mind also, there are these internal enemies which can rise up on the obsessive level. And also there's, there are the latent kilesas which lie dormant, the roots of the kilesas. So these two, all of these are called the kilesa vera, the enemy of the kilesas or a kusala vera. So these are inter the internal enemy, and these are the worst and nearest. The enemy called pugala vera, the enemy in the form of another being, could be a human or could be some type of animal. Even dogs, uh, dogs can be yeah, uh, da dangerous to us. So these are outside of us, and because they are external, one can see them and one can avoid them. The worst type of enemy is the inner enemy. So the Buddha gave a method for control, <coughs> controlling, preventing, and uprooting, <coughs> uprooting these enemies that dwell within us. The gross enemies are controlled with sila, the enemy of gross uh, physical and verbal misdeeds. And the kilesas that can arise in the mind, he gave a method for preventing and curing these. And one also, uh, if one, be, uh, he also gave a method for uprooting the very seeds of the kilesas. And if one becomes at least a sotapanna, uh, there is a level of loba, dosa, and moha that is uprooted. So if one does wrong, then dangers are sure to arise, fearful things are sure to arise. First of all, having done wrong, having committed a gross misdeed, then one becomes dissatisfied one, with oneself. One, one feels regret, and this is, this is something that causes one to fear. Fear is called beya. And there's also the danger of being criticized by those around one, especially the wise, paranuvada biya. People will say, if one does something wrong, people will say, that person is bad, they're disgusting. And furthermore, if in doing wrong one has broken the law, then one can be subject, is subject to prosecution. Uh, under the law by the by the authorities, and this is called danda bia, the fear of punishment or danger of punishment. And fourth, because actions w which are, are are bad were performed with bad intention, there is the danger of being reborn in a bad a lifetime dugati bia. So, if one as long as there are enemies, these internal enemies, dangers will arise, there will be things to fear. But if these internal enemies are quelled, then there will be nothing to fear, and one gains a peaceful world for oneself. 
So according to this series, uh, if one practices systematically and gets these benefits, that is, if one walks the right path and reaches the safe destination, how will you regard the Buddha? This person pointed out the Dhamma. And although one is not able to meet the Buddha in person, one will meet the Buddha by virtue of seeing the Dhamma in the practice. When parents have children, if these children listen to their parents and grow up to be successful in all sorts of ways, then the child will feel, feel because of my parents, I grew up to, to gain this type of success. So one will feel this type of feeling for one's parents. Only if one uh, follows uh, the instructions of one's loving parents can one be said to be a true son and daughter. So if one gets an education but uh, is not a good person, that is, if one has IQ, but not any EQ, then how will parents feel when they look at that child, a child who uh, is well-educated but not well-behaved? But on the other hand, if, one, if parents see a child who is uh, well-behaved and has learned what they have to teach, then the parents will feel, now I have someone that I can rely on. So it's said that when one practices and gains sota, past knowledge, <clears throat> it is said, samasambuddhasa orasa potabhavan kuroti, that the realization of the past, what makes one a true son or a true daughter, uh, as if coming from the heart of the Buddha, because one gets this benefit of past knowledge by listening to the instructions and then applying them. And this, by, by applying the instructions, walking the path and reaching the destination, one becomes a true son, a true daughter of the Buddha. It is said that there are many hundreds of more benefits. It is said in the text, but these seven that have been explained ex uh, specifically are the major ones. And if one follows the correct path respectfully and carefully and reaches the correct destination, then one will be able to have a victory ceremony. And one will, um, sorry, one will have gained a way to, through one's practice, one will have made one's own world peaceful, no matter how bad the rest of the world is. One will have made one's own individual world peaceful and also the world right around one. So Sierra Ji hopes that you all will be able to do this.